Hello, brothers and sisters. This video is going to be a compilation of many different things um, rolled into one that I hope will spur you on to do your research and homework, prayerfully as always, uh, into what is really going on behind the scenes um, uh, with the New World Order and Lucifer, uh, the Prince of Darkness, the God of this age, Paul called him lowercase g, and that could also, the, the lowercase g God could stand for ruler or governor of this age. Jesus said this is the hour when darkness reigns until he comes. I'm going to be doing a compilation in this video of many different subjects, and I'm going to try and condense them down as much as I can because of uh, time. I'm running out of time this weekend, but I wanted to give you something to think about on a few different levels and a few different subjects that you can prayerfully do your research on. Like I said, this channel is about exposing the New World Order, exposing the occult, exposing what's really going on behind the scenes and what is propelling, uh, what is going on behind the scenes, propelling the events that will culminate in the Bible prophecies that came from Daniel and John and Revelation. What is going on behind the scenes? And this is what I feel the Lord has called me to do, is to show these things to you. There are many symbols that the occult and Freemason reuse that we have seen throughout our lives and become so accustomed to that we don't really give it a second thought. I know I didn't until about four or five years ago. Uh, I never walked into Washington, D.C. and looked at the Washington Monument and thought twice about it. I thought it, it represented America, uh, that it was... Um, uh, patriotic, but I'm going to show you some pictures in a moment showing you that uh, Washington, D.C. is not the only city that has a, a, a monument, an obelisk. Uh, but first of all, I want to start this video out by showing you a picture of an occult image of Baphomet. Baphomet is also a uh, satanic, it's Luciferian image of the devil. Uh, it's used in Freemasonry quite a bit. It shows a hermaphroditic uh, hermaphrodite, actually, um, image, male and female, um, all at one time. And notice that in Baphomet's hands, the way the hands are positioned, one hand is pointing up, one hand is pointing down. Uh, George Washington is pictured, um, I'll show you a statue of him doing the same thing, sitting in, the, sitting in the style of Baphomet with one hand pointing up and one hand pointing down. And what this represents is as things are above, so they will be below, as above, so below. Uh, again, Baphomet is, is heavily involved. Uh, it's used in Freemasonry, it's used in the occult, and it represents Lucifer. And notice the, um, the flame above, above Baphomet's head. It represents enlightenment. So whenever you see someone carrying a torch, or uh, uh, whether it's the, you know, the, the image of the goddess Columbia in the movies and she's holding a torch, the Statue of Liberty holds this torch, it represents the torch of enlightenment that Lucifer promised Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden when he said, uh, God's holding out on you, um, that once you know good from evil, you'll be as gods. So this is what he's been trying to deceive mankind with for thousands of years, and the lies remain the same. And let me show you a picture of George Washington here. He's almost sitting in the same uh, pattern as Baphomet, pointing up and pointing down. As above, so below. It's very occult. I want to show you another picture straight on. Another one of George Washington. And if you go into the rotunda of Washington, D.C., it shows a picture of, um, let me see here if I have that for you. Oh, here it is. Uh, this is, and if you go to the rotunda in D.C., this is what you'll see when you look up at the ceiling. And underneath it says, or on, on the rotunda picture, it says the apotheosis of George Washington. Um, so what does apotheosis mean? Apotheosis means, of course, the word apoth can mean man or human being. Theo, meaning theology or God or deity, sis, or to ascend. So basically saying the apotheosis of George Washington on the rotunda is talking about George Washington ascending uh, in, to deity. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look up the, the definition of apotheosis, let me see here. Mm -hmm. Apotheosis definition. The highest point in development of something, culmination or climax, the elevation of someone to divine status, deification. So the very fact that it says in the rotunda 
the apotheosis of George Washington, it's basically saying that he wants to be elevated to divine status. And when I showed you that image of Baphomet pointing up and pointing down, and then I showed you those statues of George Washington pointing up and pointing down, and in the rotunda it says the apotheosis of George Washington, is this not exactly what Satan has been trying to tell man in Freemasonry and in the occult and in the New Age ever since the Garden of Eden, you'll be as gods, you'll be divine? So I've got a lot to show you here in this video. George Washington was known, and if you notice here, uh, the, the Masonic apron here with the all-seeing eye above the, um, above the uh, Masonic symbol here. There's an all-seeing eye here looking over the, um, um, the Masonic apron of George Washington. Freemasons were, were, have been heavily involved in the establishment of this nation. So I wanted to show you um, the, uh, the picture of Baphomet. One more time, represents Satan, the male and female image. And in, in the occult, they're very big on the uh, dark and light contrast, the male and female contrast. Okay, notice how Baphomet's hands are positioned again, one up, one down. And notice the wings, just very, very satanic. Again, George Washington, one hand up, one hand down. As, as above, so below. And of course, apotheosis of George Washington as we just read the definition, the becoming divine, ascending to be someone divine, or more than you are. And this is what Freemasonry is all about. And as I showed you before, George Washington and his Masonic apron there with the all-seeing eye over the compass of Freemasonry. Another subject I wanted to delve into you with is we tend to believe that, um, and I made notes here that I could read off of, that the Washington Monument is something patriotic. I grew up visiting Washington, D.C. many times, I never thought twice about what I was looking at. Why is there an Egyptian obelisk in Washington, D.C.? Um, I never thought to look into these things until the Lord brought them to my attention. But if you look closely, I have a couple pictures here. There is the same type of obelisk in the city of London, as well as the Vatican. And I want to show you those pictures here. There's the Washington Monument. There's the city of London. And there we have the Vatican, all having the same obelisk. Yet if you don't look into these things, you're thinking when you go to Washington, D.C., it's just something patriotic. That's just the Washington Monument, isn't it? It represents America. Okay, let me show you something else here. This is a bigger picture here. It says here, Vatican, Washington, D.C., and London. Here's, here's another clear picture of these things, of these obelisks. And these aren't the only places where obelisks can be found around the world. This is all Freemasonic. It's very occult. Uh, the Vatican, London, and Washington, D.C. all have them. Another popular image with, um, with this new world order is the, the symbol of the, the, the pyramid, right? And you'll see a lot of actors in Hollywood. You'll see a lot of people even in uh, politics making this, this symbol of the pyramid, holding it up like this, off to the side. And I want to show you some pictures of this. Again, it, it reminds me of the back of the dollar bill with the, the pyramid and the all-seeing eye. And here's a very vivid image uh, in Rome near the Vatican of this pyramid with a, with a sun behind it, meaning enlightenment, and the all-seeing eye. It, it's all connected, guys. It's all connected. And here you have pictures in, in political rallies of people holding up their hands in the shape of a pyramid as they're listening to politicians speak. Here's another image for you. Like I said, I'm compiling a lot of these things for you just so you can do your research. Here we have a picture of Hitler making the same image here, hold, holding up the, um, the pyramid image. And at the time of World War II, the Pope was heavily involved with Hitler and the Nazi regime. And that's, that's something you, you can look into as well. The Popes were very, very friendly with Hitler during World War II. All right, let me see if I can find you some other images of these. Oh, yes. Okay, here we go. Remember I was telling you Hollywood stars make them as well. What I'm about to show you is Oprah Winfrey, and I don't know who the gentleman is um, on the other side of this picture, but down below in this picture, it's showing a satanic priest making these symbols, okay? And th these are Satanist high priests making these symbols down below. But notice Oprah Winfrey, and notice the other star um, on the left-hand side there, and notice the, the image of the satanic priest down below. They're making these symbols themselves with their hands. This has all been hidden in plain sight for years. And these symbols that we see on the back of our dollar bill, the obelisks in DC, 
uh, you know, pe people doing this with one eye, and usually when they do this, it, it stands for that that all-seeing eye, the New World Order. Uh, you've got the, you know, like I said, the, the the pyramid that people make for the New World Order, and it's all Egyptian occultism. Uh, and you see this even in the Vatican. I mean, like I said, you know, Vatican City has an obelisk. They all have these obelisks. This is this. The world is what's going on behind the scenes in the world is not what it appears to be in everyday life. And I'm showing you how all of this is coming together. Uh, Rockefeller was once quoted as saying, "We are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis, and the nations will accept the new world order." And this is David Rockefeller, Bilderberg member, and he is quoted as saying this. And you can look this up yourself. We just need a major crisis and the nations will accept the new world order. And we do know Bush Sr. said that, um, uh, that when we are successful with this new world order, and we will be. See, this is what this is all about. This is where prophecy is all coming together. And these symbols of Baphomet and George Washington and the pyramids and the obelisks, and it's all Freemasonic occult symbolism. And this is what is being displayed but hidden in plain sight and, and when you grow up with these signs and symbols all the time and you see it often enough you don't think twice about it and until the holy spirit opens up your eyes to look into what these things are and what they stand for you you look at them every day and don't think twice about it i i never forget being shocked as the lord opened up my understanding about you know four or five years ago now about these things when i looked at the back of my dollar bill and i thought yeah what, what is this all about what is this all about um president roosevelt uh, was quoted as saying that presidents are not uh, elected, they are selected. Uh, here's another quote from President Roosevelt stating, in politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned this way. And this is from FDR. And of course, uh, I'd say 99.9% .9 of all the presidents have been Freemasonic. Um, Kennedy came out, President Kennedy came out trying to expose it, and he wasn't around much longer. He wanted to expose this monolithic plot, he called it. Also, I wanted to get into, there's also some images that I wanted to get into with you of the, I told you this is all a compilation um, due to the lack of time I have this weekend, so I'm just trying to give you some things to think about. Did you know that the Vatican, in its catacombs, has a lot of pictures of, you know, pagan deities, and they're calling it art that they're keeping. Um, oh, it's just a display of art. You know, when they give tours of the Vatican, allow people to go through the, the basement and the catacombs of the Vatican, um, people see these images, and there a lot of them are, you know, pagan images or pagan pictures. Um, one of them that's down there is actually a picture of Lucifer, and you can look this up. There's a picture of Lucifer and I'll read to you what this says here, on one of the Vatican catacomb walls, riding a horse and holding up his arm like, like, a torch, like a torch or a sword or something of victory. And if you look this up, it's hard to see, I know, but that is actually the Vatican will say, and you can look it up, a uh, picture of Lucifer Vatican catacombs or type something like that into, your, into the Google search engine, and this is what comes up. Depiction of Lucifer, that is the light bearer, the morning star, on the opposite wall, there is a drawing of Vesper, the evening star, cosmic symbols of the human life cycle. Now, this is what is pictured in the Vatican catacombs. Why is there a picture of Lucifer riding a horse in the Vatican catacombs? Why? Why would you even want that? And the Vatican will defend itself, saying that, it, well, it's art. It's, it's history, so we have to have this. I'm sorry, but no church calling itself by the name of Christ would have a picture of Lucifer or Luciferian art hanging on their walls. Uh, the Vatican is also accused in its catacombs of having treasures from the Second Temple. And I have some articles here that I wanted to show you. Let me see here. These are all from Jewish sources. Uh, the Temple Mount Faithful, speaking of the catacombs as well. See, the Jews know that when Rome destroyed the, the city and the sanctuary, as Daniel prophesied, Rome did not leave without taking spoils. Okay, and remember... Uh, Daniel prophesied that the prince that shall come will come from those who destroyed the city and the sanctuary or the temple. And many believe to this day, including uh, major uh, Israeli sources uh, like the Temple Mount Faithful, Aish.com, Arut Sheva, 
are all quoting that they believe that the menorah and many of the second temple vessels are being held in the catacombs as well in the Vatican. Um, it says here from the Temple Mount faithful, a request to Pope Francis to return temple menorah and other temple vessels hidden in the Vatican. And there's a picture here of the Romans carting off plunder. First of all, I wanted to show you the, where I'm getting this from. It's the Temple Mount faithful, and you can read it up there so you know where I'm getting my source. And it shows here, the triumphant arch of Titus joined the parade of Jewish captives carrying the golden temple menorah to Rome. So they took their spoil, and to this day, uh, the Vatican is rumored to have these second temple artifacts. Here's another article from Aish.com. Let's see if I can bring this up here for you. The Vatican and the Temple Vessels from Aish.com. It's a very long article, but you can look this up yourself. Um, it, you know, the, the Jews have been asking for their artifacts back. They know Rome has them in their catacombs in the Vatican. So there's a lot of interesting things, it seems, in the catacombs in the Vatican. You've got pictures of Lucifer. you got pictures uh, being, why? Why? And then we have um, here from Arut Shiva. Uh, let me see here. Councilman King announces he will not join Jerusalem officials welcoming Pope unless he returns Jewish treasures from the Vatican basement. This is from Arut Shiva here. So there, this is three Israeli news sources that I'm quoting from, all telling the Pope, give us our things back from the Second Temple return these things. Remember, what did Daniel say? The prince that shall come, shall come from who? The people that destroyed the city and the sanctuary. And again, I'll show you that picture. It says here, uh, the Arch of Titus. Remember, it was the armies under Titus, the Roman armies under Titus that destroyed the city and the sanctuary, uh, carting away second temple um, artifacts that were precious in the second temple to the Jews. So to this day, the Vatican is being asked to return these things. So what is in the catacombs of the Vatican? We've got pictures of pagan gods. We've got a picture of Lucifer um, holding, that, uh, holding that torch of victory, and I'll blow this up for you. This is in the Vatican. If you look it up, this is supposed to be Lucifer riding his horse and holding up his hand with victory. Why is that there? Another thing aligning the Vatican with Lucifer, which I find very interesting, um, is, uh, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's it's the um, a telescope that the Vatican had when it first um, established it here. The large binocular telescope near infrared utility with camera and integral field unit for extragalactic research, but it all it all lines up to spell Lucifer. Vatican tied Mount Graham Observatory launches Lucifer telescope. Interesting, isn't it? So they combined, instead of saying this long name, large binocular telescope near infrared utility with camera and integral um, field unit for extragalactic research. If you take all that into an acronym, it spells Lucifer. So they simply called their telescope Lucifer. And the Vatican's been questioned on that many times. And they just say that it just happens to play out like that with the name that they gave the telescope down below, that long name that that acronym just happened to fall into place. Um, I'm telling you, there's a lot going on behind the scenes here. Um, I'm trying to find you more and more images here. Um, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Uh, Daniel said that um, the man of sin would cause the craft to prosper in his hand. Uh, this is, you know, Freemasonry is heavily, heavily into this, the New Age movement, the occult, the craft to prosper in his hand. Uh, this image of an all-seeing eye with, with illumination coming from it and a pyramid is seen not only in Hollywood, but it's also seen in the Catholic Church. As you see here, compare the symbol of the occultist, Aleister Crowley, to engraving behind Catholic Bishop here in this picture. Notice Aleister Crowley wearing that hat. Not only is the hat shaped like a pyramid, but look at the, the sunburst coming out from it, meaning enlightenment. And look at this, this Catholic... Um, Bishop here, he's got the he's got the pyramid there with the sunburst coming out of it, right behind his chair. I hope you can see this on my phone. Do you see that a little better? This this isn't heavily in Catholicism. It's on the back of our dollar bill. It's all over. It's been hidden in plain sight uh, for years. Here you have a picture of um, Benedict. Um, 
And I'm trying to expose the, the Luciferianism here and the Whore of Babylon, the Luciferianism here in, in our founding fathers like George Washington and Baphomet and, and the symbols that you see in Hollywood, um, on television. Um, here's a picture of um, Pope Benedict. And it's saying here, it looks like a picture of the devil with horns. And it's saying, what is that? You know, it's, it shows a picture of, if you can see this, there's this creature here on his robe that he's wearing. And what is that? I mean, this person's got, it's, you know, it says, who is that? And it's it's got horns on it. You know, I mean, we know that the whore that rides the beast is led by Lucifer himself. Remember, Lucifer is the god of this age. His church will be a counterfeit church. It'll have a form of godliness, a form of spirituality, but deny the power thereof. Again, I want to show you some um, some of these other symbols here. I'll go through it one more time. Okay. Again, I'm trying to bring all this together for you. The New World Order, Freemasonry, um, these, these Egyptian occult uh, symbols all throughout the world, London, Vatican, D.C. This is not just a patriotic symbol for Washington, D.C., guys. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes than you realize. Here's another image of this. Mm -hmm. uh, again, does not George, this uh, statue of George Washington look like Baphomet that I showed you? As above, so below. The apotheosis of George Washington. You've got the Freemasonic apron here with the all-seeing eye. They believe through Satan's authorship, here's the apotheosis of George Washington, through Satan's promise, his ancient promise, that he would be the enlightener of men, that he would make you as gods. And this is what he has, this, the same lie has been going on since the Garden of Eden. Here's another, that image of George Washington again. And we'll bring up um, Baphomet one more time. Here we go, one hand up, one hand down. The torch over Baphomet's head, meaning enlightenment. And notice that it's a goat. Notice the feet. Notice the horns. It's also called sometimes the goat of Mendez. And remember when Jesus said he will one day separate the sheep from the goats? Remember that? He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Isn't this image of Baphomet? Doesn't it look like a goat to you? Hmm. Very interesting. These are just some things that I'm throwing together for you that the Lord has been showing me over the years. I wanted to give you something to think about. All right, so is it a coincidence that London, the Vatican and DC have an Egyptian obelisk? Is it a coincidence that all through Hollywood and political events, they're making the sign of the pyramid, on, like on the back of your dollar bill that says Novus Order Seclorum, New World Order? Uh, let me see here. Again, Stars in Hollywood, uh, compared to a satanic priest. What are they doing? See, this has all been things that we, we tend to overlook, myself included, until the Holy Spirit began to open my eyes and show me these things. And here's a quote from Brock Adams, former director, UN Health Organization. Again, Brock, B-R-O-C-K, Adams, former director, UN Health Organization is quoted as saying, to achieve a world government, it is necessary to remove from the minds of men their individualism, loyalty to family traditions, national patriotism, and religious dogmas. Okay? They want to take away national patriotism because they want to combine everything in, into this one world government structure. And as far as religious dogmas, uh, they don't want you to adhere to the doctrine of Christ. Remember, this New World Order plan is to make everything look like peace and love. You're all children of God. Let's all come together as one. Um, and eventually man will ascend, you know, that we'll find our own divine spark. I mean, this is what it's all about, guys. So I wanted to touch on all these things for you. I know it's a compilation of different things, but I want you to think about this for a moment. What is Baphomet and what does it stand for? And why is George Washington posing like that, or why did they make an image of him as a statue posing that way? This is very Freemasonic, it's very occultish. Uh, the rotunda in Washington shows the apotheosis of George Washington, and I explained to you what that means. Apotheosis, or meaning the ascension of deity for man, okay, and they're, they're ascribing this to George Washington. 
I wanted to go over the obelisks with you. There are more obelisks, not just in London and the Vatican and DC. There are different places all over the world. As a matter of fact, um, even in Israel, there's a picture, I believe, in front of one of their um, judicial courts that has the New World Order Pyramid there. It's just, it's tragic. Um, I wanted to go over with you this Luciferian telescope. Uh, why is there a picture of Lucifer in the Vatican catacombs um, along with other uh, Vesper and things like that, um, other pagan deities? And like I said, I'm, I'm compiling all of this so you can do your research prayerfully. Uh, I quoted you three Jewish sources um, citing that the Vatican has the second temple treasures, at least some of them. And there is an old engraving there in stone, uh, the Arch of Titus, showing the, the Roman armies under Titus carrying away the uh, spoils from the Second Temple. And the Pope has been asked many times by um, high-ranking Jewish officials, return our menorah, return our vessels that were sacred to us. So the Vatican catacombs are interesting. Type in Vatican catacombs, Second Temple treasures, or Vatican catacombs, picture of Lucifer. Uh, or Vatican Catacombs picture of Vesper. Why are, why are these things there? And then you've got this Luciferian telescope. Look in the Baphomet. What does it mean? Um, why is George Washington sitting in this symbol, as above, so below? As a matter of fact, even in some Catholic churches or pictures, there are pictures of Jesus doing the same thing. Did you know that? If you look that up and Google it, maybe I can find it for you. It shows, uh, when the Catholic Church portrays Jesus at times, it shows him pointing up and pointing down, just like the Baphomet image. Uh, let me see. See if I can get this up for you. Okay. Yep, a lot of these images will show like this two fingers up, and it may not be exactly the same, but yeah, here we go. I think I've got it for you guys. It's showing the correlation between, here's Baphomet in the middle, um, and some pictures of the Pope po pointing up like this. Okay, notice how Baphomet's hands are positioned, like two fingers up like this, and it's showing some images of how, the Catholic images of how they portray Jesus. Notice Baphomet's hand there in the circle in the middle. Notice Jesus' hands and how they're depicted, how some monk's hands are depicted, or the Pope's hands or whatever are depicted. They're like these two fingers up. Here we go. Let me see if I can find this for you again. Very similar, is it not? Here's another picture of Baphomet with one hand up. Like with the, the hands right there, they're comparing it. This one has always been interesting to me with the upside down cross. Uh, with, um, what was it, Pope, Pope visits Holy, yeah, um, the Sermon on the Mount. And this is where he goes... Um, where Benedict went to um, where Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount, and I was there, and this is totally, in my mind, desecrates everything. Um, it shows here, now we all know that the sign of the upside-down cross represents Satanism. If you go and type Satanism, upside-down, inverted cross, it represents Luciferianism. So why was he sitting in this, this uh, stone throne with an inverted cross? Now, the Vatican will defend itself and say that... Um, it represented Peter being crucified upside down. I don't buy this. I don't buy into that at all. I'm sorry, but if my church started displaying pictures of the upside down cross in my church, I'd say, what's going on here? I, I would question these things. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, one of the symbols for Baphomet that you'll see uh, when you see uh, images of Baphomet and you look them up online, There'll be some banners sometimes over um, Baphomet stating, do as thou wilt. Uh, one of the major um, occult ways of uh, talking about things is do as you will. Remember, God says, Jesus said, not my will be done, but your will be done, Father. Um, the Baphomet symbol says, do as thou wilt. That's Satan. That's Luciferianism coming and telling man, you don't have to submit yourself to God. You have your own divine spark. You will be as God's. Do as thou wilt. Okay, so this is just something to um, bring together, something for you to think about over this next week if you have time to look into these things. Why are there all these obelisks all over the place? What do they really stand for? When next time you go to Washington, D.C., or if you see a picture of the, uh, of the Washington Monument, don't think Washington Monument and patriotism. Think occult and Freemasonry, okay?
uh, the London obelisk. You've got the Vatican obelisk. Um, it's Egyptian Freemasonic paganism symbols, okay? It's not what it appears to be. Um, Lucifer in the catacombs. You've got, I mean, I could, I could just go on and on. The second temple treasures. There is so much going on behind the scenes um, that is hidden in plain sight, and the occult loves to do that. They love to hide things hidden in plain sight. And unless the Holy Spirit opens your eyes to these things, you'll see some of these symbols, people doing these things, um, making the one eye symbol for the all seeing eye. Uh, you'll see obelisks and pyramids and, uh, you know, uh, pe people pointing up and down at the same time. All of this has been so prevalent in our society since we were children. And we've seen these things on television shows and in movies um, that we don't think twice about it. We're like, well, what, what, what are they doing? You know, it, it, you see it so much, you almost become numb to it. So, but when the Lord begins to pull the veil away from your eyes and, and the scales begin to fall off and you begin to see what's really going on behind the scenes, does this not help you, hopefully in this video, to see how evil and ugly and dark this Luciferian system is right now in this age? Remember, Paul said that Lucifer is the god of this age right now. It doesn't mean that he has, he has sovereign dominion over everything. He can only do what God has allowed him to do to accomplish the Lord's purposes. But ask the Holy Spirit to start opening up your eyes. This is what Daniel was shown. This is what he was shown. And this is what John was shown as well on the island of Patmos. As a matter of fact, when Daniel was shown these things, it said he, he lay ill for days. He was overwhelmed by what he saw. Can you imagine? As a matter of fact, the book of Daniel was sealed until the time of the end. It wouldn't even be understood until the time of the end. And now all these things are, are coming about. It, it, it's, it's here, guys. It's here. So I wanted to give you a, a, a video, a compilation of, of things that the Lord has been laying on my heart lately uh, and show you visuals, visual aids with this. Hopefully I will get to either today or sometime this week, I can get to making videos on the Bohemian Grove and the Jesuit Oath as well. Uh, the Bohemian Grove is um, a place where the world's politicians gather in front of a huge giant owl and light fires and offer mock sacrifices as well. A lot of demonic rituals go on in Bohemian Grove. So that's something else to look into. Um, but I wanted to um, put these things together for you. I wanted to tie these things together with proof from articles, pictures, and show you this is that mystery of iniquity that was at work when Jesus walked the earth, when Jesus told the builders, meaning the Freemasons, the occultists, that he is the foundation or the stone that the builders are rejecting, that he is the cornerstone and he will crush all of this under his feet. This is the same mystery of iniquity that was working when Paul said that um, the spirit of Antichrist was already at work. Uh, Freemasonry, the occult, and all of these things have been going on since the Garden of Eden when Satan said, I will be as the Most High. And he is going to use his children, he's going to use his own, like Jesus said, and the lust of your father you will do. Jesus said that, the lust of your father, the devil, you will do. That's why you see these, these politicians, these stars in Hollywood, uh, the Whore of Babylon, all displaying these symbols, you know, like this and these symbols and, and, and carrying these things out. They are of their father, the devil. Jesus said it himself, and the lust of your father you will do. Ask the Holy Spirit to open up your eyes to what's going on. Ephesians 5.11 says that we are to expose the deeds of darkness. The church needs to know what's going on so that we can witness to people, so that we can, uh, like Paul said, help snatch some from the flames. Uh, preach the gospel to every creature. I'm not saying delve into these things heavily with people right away, but slowly work them into your conversation with people. Um, if you're dealing with end times with them or, or prophecy, show them how these things are all coming together. The one world religion, the one world government, the one world economic system. It's all coming together just like Daniel Revelation foretold. But I wanted to expose these occultic Freemason symbols to you. Uh, some of our, our founding fathers, uh, it's not like we, we were told in the history books that they were God-fearing men. These men were Freemasons. Um, these men wanted to be exalted like gods. So uh, it even says so in the rotunda in Washington, D.C. And the next time you visit D.C., do not look at the Washington Monument the same again. It is a Freemasonic symbol right along with the Statue of Liberty. You notice the torch that she's holding. It's the torch of enlightenment. And, and that's another occult symbol as well. Or when you go to the movies and you see this goddess, Columbia, it says Columbia Pictures, and she's holding that torch. That's what it means. 
man is enlightened, empowered by Lucifer to be his gods. This is what this this is what this is all about. And that that all-seeing eye, sometimes you'll see people with it on their forehead, um, representing the third eye or something like that, meaning that you have a divine spark within, you know, that you have that ability to be divine. It's sometimes called the third eye. So it's it's all it's all hidden in plain sight in movies and in commercials and in Hollywood and politicians' uh, hand symbols. A lot of these hand symbols here represent the horns of Lucifer. You'll see people go like this. That, rep that represents the horns of the devil. So that, that's another thing for another time as well. Um, but I hope that this video was enlightening to some. Um, we are not to be discouraged as we see these things happening. They're becoming more and more visible. But for those of us who know the Lord Jesus though, Jesus said what to us? That when you begin to see these things happen, look up for your redemption draws nigh. When you begin to see these things happen, they've been happening. So how close are we to his return? When you begin to see these things happen, look up for your redemption draws nigh. So I didn't want to just give you this message as something heavy. Uh, I wanted you to look into it, yes, but also to end it with hope. Look up for your redemption draws nigh. God bless you and thank you for listening.